folks, when it comes to the tragically woke Toronto District School Board, how low can it go? Well, how about this low? On September 18th, Grange Park School scheduled a field trip. It was sold to parents as being a rally for, quote, Mercury Justice for the Grassy Narrows community, end quote, and of course, Indigenous rights. But talk about bait and switch. Outrageously, what was supposed to be a protest in solidarity with Native people turned into an anti-Israel hate fest. Grade three students were encouraged to chant, quote, from Turtle Island to Palestine, occupation is a crime, end quote. Oh, and it gets worse. Students were also encouraged to wear blue shirts to identify themselves as colonizers. And those Jewish students who said they were a little uncomfortable with the event, well, they were reportedly told to, quote, get over it, end quote. It was equal parts outrageous and egregious, and yet another example of how indoctrination is eclipsing education in the public school system. And joining me now for more on this despicable display of wokeism on steroids is Sue Ann Levy of True North and the author of Underdog, Confessions of a Right-Wing Gay Jewish Muckraker. Sue Ann, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, you're very welcome. Well, you wrote a great article in True North, and there are so many angles here to explore. Mm -hmm. But first of all, Sue Ann, who in blue hell was responsible for this fiasco? I don't think we'll ever find that out, mm. uh, Dave, because uh, the school board is absolutely rudderless. And I predicted this actually at the beginning of the year because you you have a, an education director, get this, who is supposed to retire as of the beginning of November, but walked out the door last week, the same day that this uh, protest slash hate fest slash whatever happened um and take to take vacation days tell her retirement date so she's gone um and then they've got rotating directors and then the chairman uh took off in the summer to run for the open seat on city council god help me if she gets she wins that that race but you know they're just absolutely um no direction Unbelievable. And but we do have a teacher, Anne Marie Longpre, who you uh, uh, spoke of in your column. And um, she's not apologizing. She's doubling down. Here's one of her um, ex tweets. But there was absolutely no deception. This was a march for indigenous land rights. Do you really believe it's harmful to kids to hear the chant from Turtle Island to Palestine, occupation is a crime. Uh, yeah, I think it is harmful. Yeah. So, Anne, what do you make of this complete lack of contrition on her part? Well, I think it uh, permeates the board uh, with the more radical left teachers and the unionists um, who have been marching for Palestine, including the head of the Elementary Teachers Federation, who is a self-loathing Jew and still, you know, marches with her compatriots. Um, but I think it permeates the board. And they had a, a willing ally in Colleen Russell Rollins, who was the director of the board. And it's all about the oppressed versus the oppressor. You know, you've heard that language before. Mm -hmm. So we as Jews are allegedly the oppressors. And the Palestinians are the oppressed and there's no distinction made for what actually happened or no caring about Hamas. But I'm not the least bit surprised that this happened. I'm actually glad that it did because um, maybe it woke parents up finally uh, about these uh, radical lefties who, as I said, permeate the board. I, I mean, I saw it years ago. They came after me when I tried to expose their anti-Semitism. So now it's out in the open. The question is, Dave, what is the board going to do about it? What is the minister going to do about it? What is the premier going to do about it? 
Oh, so Anne, I think that the board only issued an apology because they're not fundamentally sorry. They're sorry they got mm-hmm. caught. Yeah. You know, that they're sorry they are getting yeah. called out. They truly right. believe this. And, you know, I got to tell you, Swan, what we've seen in the streets of our great dominion and other countries in the Western world since last October 7th, even before mm-hmm. the bodies of almost 1,200 people in Israel were cold, we saw the pro-Hamas people come out and chant the most filthy, coded, anti-Semitic messages from the river to the sea, <laughs> intifada, <laughs> Uh, go back to Europe. Can you imagine? And I remember several weeks ago covering a protest at the TDSB headquarters, predominantly uh, it was Jewish parents, because what the kids were learning was how bad it is to espouse anti-Palestinian racism. Are you kidding me? I had parents telling me that visibly Jewish students were getting beaten up and bullied and the mm-hmm. the board, the teachers, the principal were doing nothing. How do we have, how did we get here, Sue Ann? Well, we got here because you've got a bunch of woke trustees who are not bright, I might add, don't understand the Middle East situation. Again, follow the oppressor oppressed dogma. Um, and they they're quite happy to let this happen. Uh, other than two or three, uh, Wei Dong Pai, for example, has tried. I mean, he even tried to move a motion to stop this geopolitical uh, grandstanding uh, over the last six months and was turned down twice. Um, he's trying again. But I mean, this is the way these people think. They are they think it's free speech. It's not free speech. It's hate speech. They don't un- they don't understand that there's a fine line. So you've got the trustees who don't oversee the board properly are very selective about uh, what issues they actually tackle. You had a uh, edu- an education director who was all about anti black racism and the oppressed, and I believe that anti semitism pervaded the board under her watch. I'm not going to blame her directly, but, you know, it was allowed to fester. And then you've got these radical unions. You've got the uh, every single one. Like, let's think about it. QP, uh, the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario, um, the high school union, they're all engaged and immersed in this anti-Israel, pro-Palestinian dogma. And they've been moving motions for years, but nobody really paid attention. And now it's all out in the open. You, you know what? You make a good point, Sue Ann. Um, the unions and the school boards, they basically march in lockstep uh, these they days. Do. And, you know, mm-hmm. uh, my heart pines for those teachers, good teachers, just teachers, mm-hmm. who can't bear to see what happens, but they sit on their hands, they keep their mouth shut because they know the repercussions they will face from their own unions. I mean, as they say in yeah. Vegas, the fix is in. But you know, Suan, this is getting a lot of attention, including from the Premier of Ontario himself, uh, Doug Ford. Mm-hmm. Why don't we just run mm-hmm. a clip and see what Premier Ford had to say about this outrageous so-called field trip? I just wanted to ask you about a field trip that was taken by some middle school students at the Toronto District School Board. They were supposed to be going to a rally. It ended up being a political protest, and there are some concerns that they were taking part in this protest. Just wondering what you think hearing those reports, and should the province send in an investigator? No, I think it's disgraceful. You're trying to indoctrinate our kids. They should be in the classroom learning about reading, writing, spelling, arithmetic, the whole shebang. But instead, the TDSB and these teachers want to bring them down to a rally, a Palestinian rally, and uh, it's ridiculous. I've said this indoctrination for for years, and I don't want to paint a broad brush for all the teachers, because it's not all the teachers. It's a small minority teachers, and it's no different in our universities as well. Bad actors that are teaching our kids. Number one, you shouldn't be teaching our kids. But number two, stick with your knitting. Stick with teaching the kids the geography, history, math, spelling. That's what they need. They don't need to be indoctrinated in some some protest. Uh, it's unacceptable. There needs to be an investigation, and uh, we'll be all over this and make sure people are held accountable. And they think twice about bringing young little kids without the parents' permission 
on these on these school trips. It's disgusting. Okay, Sue Ann, I'm very happy the premier is condemning this farce. But here's but as Clara Peller, the uh, old spokeswoman once upon a time used to say at Wendy's, where's the beef? In other words, Sue Ann, um, the only thing that would satisfy a lot of people who are also disgusted by what happened is that head should roll. And the Ministry of Education has the power to dissolve school boards that have completely gone off the rails, and that would include the Toronto District School Board. Now, Jill Dunlop, the current minister, she's brand new, but we've seen in over the years, Stephen Lecce, I think, Sue Ann, I want to get your opinion, I think this guy was an absolute cowardly disgrace. He couldn't even, you know, get that outrageous shop teacher, Busty Lemieux, to leave his fake Z cup boobs at home. He would literally run away from journalists or parents when it came to asking questions. And this is a, a party that back in 2018, they ran against the radicalized education. I would say now in 2024, Sue Ann, education in Ontario is more radicalized than it was six years ago. But Swen, can we expect to see the current Minister of Education, Jill Dunlop, come in and have heads roll? Well, if we keep the pressure up. I mean, the media has to keep the pressure up. Parents, parents, and I can't emphasize how much, parents have to keep the pressure up. They're disgusted. They're absolutely disgusted. I think there's been uh, a point of no re return at this point. Um, but you're right about Stephen Lecce. He let a lot of things slide over the years. I remember when the uh, Tories first came in and I said, you've got to clean out that ministry. Uh, you have all these radical, woke, anti-black racism types in the ministry from the Kathleen Wynn era. And you've got to clean them out. But they didn't. And they were responsible, actually, those ministry people for putting uh, Colleen Russell Rollins into that board. And she absolutely ruined that board, I have to say, unequivocally. So, you know, that was a time. She's out. She's on vacation. She's technically left the building. Jill Dunlop can make a big, big uh, impact if she comes down very solidly and says, we're taking over that board. Bring in a supervisor and not a woke supervisor. Somebody who can bring that board back to uh, a board that embraces learning and academics, not uh, social justice, and you know, set a strong example. Um, and and I think those teachers who were involved in the protest could be put on leave or fired or put before the Ontario College of Teachers. I mean, it's uh, it's it's heartbreaking to see what has happened to the school system. It's the news event of the year. Canada's most controversial premier sits down with Canada's most controversial journalist, and everything is on the table. Come watch Ezra Levant one-on-one -on -one with Alberta Premier Danielle Smith in front of a live studio audience in Calgary. Nothing's off limits, nothing's held back. Questions that would make Justin Trudeau invoke martial law, answers that will make Stephen Gilbo pee his pants. You're not going to want to miss this one. But you have to be there in person at the Rebel News Live mega conference in Calgary on October the 5th. Tickets are limited, so drop everything and go to rebelnewslive.com right now. Special discounted prices for Patriots and special extra high prices if you're with the CBC. Go to rebelnewslive.com now.